In this section, we want to spend some more time talking about derivatives of functions. Specifically, we're going to be looking at information that we can pull out of a function's derivative to tell us about the behavior of that graph. So that's what we'll be looking at in our first two topics. Then in our second two topics, we're going to move on to what's called concavity and then looking at finding inflection points. So while our first two topics deal with the first derivative of a function, f prime, the second two topics in this section are going to be dealing with f double prime or the second derivative of a function. But we'll get to that in a bit. What we want to start off by talking about is just the idea of where our function is increasing and where our function is decreasing and how we can use the derivative to understand that behavior. So we have graphed below the function x cubed minus 3x. What we want to do is construct a sign chart for f of x, or I'm sorry, for f prime of x to see how that sign chart matches up with the behavior of the function itself. So looking at our function, we can tell that on this first interval, our function is increasing up until the specific point. Then our graph changes directions and starts becoming a decreasing function. And then we hit another point where we change directions again. And our graph changes back to increasing. So keeping in mind that what the derivative tells us is information about the rate of change of our function, then we know that at negative 1, even though it's just for an instant, we have this instant where our graph has to become horizontal. Or I'm sorry, the graph of the tangent line for our function has to become horizontal. The idea being that for our function to have to change from increasing to decreasing, so to change from positive to negative, at some point in there, our derivative function has to take on a value of 0. And the same thing's happening at 1. To change from decreasing to increasing, our derivative function has to take on a value of 0. So that the graph of the tangent line for just that one instant is 0. Or the slope is 0, meaning the graph is horizontal. So what we see on the other intervals, where our function from negative infinity up to negative 1 is increasing, if we constructed our sign chart, we would get positive values for the derivative on that interval. On the interval from negative 1 to 1, our function would be decreasing. So evaluating the derivative at any point in that interval would give us a negative result. And then plugging in any values greater than 1 would give us a positive value, since our function is increasing again. So any points where f prime of x is equal to 0, so our points at negative 1 and 1 here, so any point where our first derivative is equal to 0 or the derivative is undefined are called partition numbers. So these values tell us where our function either may or may not change directions. So in our first example that we looked at here, we found these partition numbers. In this case, we did it just by looking at the graph and observing where we get that change from positive to negative, where we get the change from negative to positive. So we have these partition numbers where our first derivative is equal to 0, and we see that the graphs changes directions from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So with those partition numbers, our graph may change direction or it may not. And we can see that in this ex in the second example. We've got x cubed plus 1 graph below. So we want to, again, construct a sign chart for f prime of x. So at x equals 0, we have a point here. So our function is increasing. And right at x equals 0, our function would level out. So we'd have a horizontal tangent line 
again, just for that instant. And then our function as it passes x equals 0 continues increasing. So in this case, we have a function that's increasing up until this point where the rate of change becomes 0 for just an instant. And then past that, the function continues increasing. So while at 0, we do have a partition number. In this case, values of the derivative below 0 would give us a positive result. Values of the derivative above 0 would also give us a positive result. So this function is always increasing. So even though we have a partition number, the function does not change direction. So what we're going to be looking at in this section is this idea of given a function, find its derivative, and then any of these partition numbers, which again are points where our func derivative function is either equal to 0 or undefined. Then construct a sign chart to determine the behavior of our function around that point to see if our function changes from increasing to decreasing or if there is no change in direction. And then some of the results that we can draw from that.